It's a simple treat, the chikki. Children in India have enjoyed this energy bar for millennia. But these chickies are not just any chickies. They contain a very nourishing algae, spirulina. Just one gram contains as much vitamin A as a carrot, as much iron as a plate of spinach. Vitamin A deficiency is a key element in mother and child malnutrition. Deficiencies in iron and zinc can lead to brain damage, stunted growth and blindness. Malnutrition is a vicious circle or spiral. To defeat it, we need to build a virtuous spiral. The tiny spirulina algae grows in water in hot climates. It has a long history in Asia and Africa and is now called the food of the future. But can it also be a food for solving malnutrition today? How can something so small help to combat this massive problem? How can spirulina become an affordable food supplement for the poor? Can it also be a source of income and livelihood for the poor, preferably women? Malnutrition erodes the potential of a human being. Its massacres are silent, away from the news cameras. Malnutrition denies a person key nutrients such as vitamins, iron and trace elements. Because of iron deficiency, many pregnant mothers are anemic. They have less red blood cells. They will have underweight children. Less chances for a decent life. And the next generation will be poor, partly invalid and a burden for their family. Antenna Technologies, an NGO of scientists in Geneva, Switzerland, has 10 years experience on Spirulina with its subsidiary in Madurai, India, and with production centers in Asia and Africa. Their story is one of hope, of realism, of making the Spirulina story one of a virtuous spiral. We are now in Madurai, a medium-sized town in southern India. This unit with 40 tanks is operated by 15 women. It can produce a total of four kilograms of dry spirulina per day. The technology is simple. The basins are made from truck tarpaulins of six by three meters. The spirulina algae grows in warm water, best in hot climates between 25 and 35 degrees. It is almost microscopic in the form of a spiral. All you need is a tank of water, about 20 centimeters deep, sunlight, heat and a cover. In order to grow, the culture needs an alkaline solution with a pH value of 9 to 11 made by adding fertilizers. These are totally absorbed by the growing algae, avoiding any risk of pollution. You can produce 150 grams of dry spirulina on a clear day, in a basin of about 20 square meters, less on rainy and colder days. The production process is relatively easy and can be mastered by the village women. Growing spirulina needs a lot of care. Every two hours the water should be stirred. Once a day, the water is passed through a filter mesh and the spirulina is harvested. The algae form a kind of slurry. Then the water is drained in a simple press. And with another simple tool, strands are made and prepared for drying. The dried strands are then ground in a mixer and packed. After harvesting, another task is to replace the fertilizer in the tank. How much depends on the weight of the harvested spirulina. The women calculate how much fertilizer they need to add. Because some adults find the smell and deep green color a bit strong, special products have been created to suit them. For children, it's great mixed with cereals like roasted millet or ground nuts, some sugar and perhaps some cardamom. An almost ideal product is the Indian Chicky Energy Bar. In Mumbai, a nutritionist and a chicky waller have developed spirulina and rich chickies with a delicious taste and a high nutritional value. Chicky wallers are small enterprises that make them with simple equipment. The sweetening and binding agent is jaggery, the condensed juice of raw sugarcane. It's well known that sugarcane molasses is rich in vitamins and minerals. In the enriched chickies, jaggery is mixed with cereals, puffed rice or ground nuts, plus spirulina powder. 
The chickies are formed with the help of simple utensils and then packed and sealed with a candle. The medical benefits of spirulina are clear. Studies by Professor Dr. Edwin, a pediatrician in Madurai, have shown that child malnutrition can be corrected with regular spirulina supplements. The children improved in their weight. The iron status in the body also improved. The vitamin A status also in the body also improved. The recommended daily dosage is one gram for infants, two for children from five to 12, and five for pregnant and nursing mothers. Over 45 days, these doses have shown significant improvements in malnourished children. Some improved after just 15 days. In one group of children taking spirulina, most had gains in weight and increases in hemoglobin, serum total iron, and serum proteins, markedly higher than with children not taking spirulina. Another pediatrician, Professor Dr. Potdar, has used spirulina in a slum feeding program in Mumbai. He's conducting a thorough clinical test with 1,000 children to confirm earlier evidence. Other benefits are emerging. A study in Senegal has indicated how micronutrients from spirulina are key to a child's cognitive development. To consolidate the belief of mothers in spirulina's benefits, it makes a lot of sense to link feeding with income generation. Reducing poverty also reduces malnutrition. These mothers, part of a microcredit program, are committed to feeding their children properly. They pay 10 rupees a month for one chicky per child a day. They invest their small loans for productive purposes. Some mothers buy chickies without joining the credit program. This mother believes that they are good for her four children, especially her handicapped younger son. And many mothers are convinced that spirulina helps their children to concentrate better at school. With its role in nutrition known, how can spirulina be produced on a sustainable basis? In Madurai, a three-part marketing strategy is emerging. First, sell one-third to the poor as chickies and sachets at street kiosks. Even poor children spend their pocket money in these village kiosks. Sell another third to child development and feeding agencies and the corporate social responsibility markets. And place the rest on the local market for tablets and health food snacks. Malnutrition leads to poverty, and poverty to malnutrition. Spirulina can help to break this vicious cycle. For as long as the mothers don't have a decent income, it will be hard to end poverty permanently. But if malnutrition programs are linked to income generation and microfinance programs, the investment may become sustainable. That much we have learnt from this mother. She bought a second cow with a small loan, and now sells four litres of cow milk a day doubling her income to a dollar a day. Her most precious investment in her children is now secure. She gladly pays for her monthly chickies so that her children can have a better future. Only if they are healthy and can concentrate well at school will they be able one day to walk away from poverty. One day soon.